Okay, in this video, we are gonna solve number two from the 2019 Calc BC exam, and it is a polar question. So we are given a picture of the region, and we're told that R of theta is three root theta times the sine of theta squared. So be careful when you enter that in your calculator that you're not still inside the square root when you start entering the sine function. And we're told we go from zero to radical pi. And the first question is to find the area of S, which is that shaded region. Uh, so this one's pretty much all set up for you. So I'm actually just going to start writing it, right? So the area is going to be 1 half, um, which is always there for polar integrals. So make sure you don't forget that. The integral from our bounds, which is 0 to radical pi, of the quantity r squared, and then d theta. This is definitely a calculator problem, so I'm gonna uh, show you what I did on my calculator. I defined r of t, I always use t because it's easier to get to on the keyboard than theta. Um, so I defined r of t and then I just punched it straight in. And so I'm gonna say this area is approximately 3.534. And uh, let's take a look at part B. So the question in part B is what is the average distance from the origin to a point on the curve when you're between zero and radical pi. So the key thing here, I think, is to realize that r of theta is the distance from the origin. So this question is effectively just asking us to find the average value of r of theta on this interval. So understanding the question makes it a lot easier, and a lot of the polar questions are very straightforward. You just have to really understand what they're asking. So we're gonna set this up. It's gonna be the integral divided by the interval. So the integral is from zero to radical pi of r of theta d theta. So it's not an area question, so we're not squaring that or anything. Um, so it's the integral from zero to radical pi of r of theta d theta divided by radical theta uh, radical pi minus zero. And again, calculator question, so punch it in, um, and you can see that's a really small screenshot there. Um, we get approximately 1.580. If you're uncomfortable rounding that, you can go with 1.579, or you can do more than three decimal places, but you have to do at least three decimal places, either rounded or truncated correctly. Um, so either of those answers would be fine. The next question tells us that there's a line through the origin with a positive slope m. Uh, that So that's kind of key, the positive slope part, um, which means we're in the first quadrant that divides the region S into two regions with equal areas. Write, but do not solve an equation involving one or more integrals whose solution gives the value of M. Okay, so there's one kind of key part that we need to realize here. So we have this line with a slope of M. So, and it's through the origin, so I'm just gonna kind of draw that. Um, so that line is Y equals MX. And that means that Y over M, uh, sorry, Y over X is equal to M, which means, uh, that uh, y over x is tan of theta, so tan of theta is m, which means that theta is the inverse tangent of m, which is really good to know. So alternatively, I think you should actually just know that a line through the origin um, is gonna be in polar the inverse tangent of the slope. Uh, but either way, we've arrived at this. So that's gonna actually be uh, the theta value, value for our bounds. So we wanna go uh, from zero to that value, and that area should equal that value to radical pi. So let's uh, write that down. So one half the integral from zero to inverse tangent of m of r of theta squared d theta should be equal to one half the integral from arctan of m to radical pi of r of theta squared d theta. There are other integrals you could write, right? Like uh, zero to, to arctan of m should be uh, half of the total area, things like that. Um, but anyway, this definitely gets the, uh, the points because it conveys the idea. All right, let's take a look at the last part. The last part's actually a little weird. Um, so for k greater than zero, we're gonna let a of k be the area of the portion of region S that is also inside the circle r equals k cosine of theta. So k cosine of theta, and we wanna find the limit as k approaches infinity of a of k. So if you think about it, um, k times cosine of theta, where k is greater than zero, is just a circle centered on the x-axis with diameter k. So we wanna see what happens as k goes to infinity. 
So if you're not too sure, my intuition kind of told me that um, we're kind of just going to find the area of S that's inside the first quadrant. But uh, what I did is I just started graphing things. So we're looking for the area of S that's inside of K cosine of theta. So I just grabbed my calculator and I graphed K cosine theta for larger and larger values of K to kind of convince myself that that's what's happening. So the first one there is when K is 10, then K is 100, then K is 1,000. You can see that K cosine theta, um, the, the circle itself is kind of approaching the Y axis as K goes to infinity. So from there, I was comfortable writing that um, the thing that we're looking for this limit is actually just the area of s that's inside the first quadrant. So I kind of explored a little bit. Um, I, I took a guess to begin with, and it turned out to be right. And that's what I think you would do on this problem if you weren't really sure. Like you have a calculator, so use the calculator. Um, and then this, I just uh, punched into the calculator, and I got approximately 3.324. Um, so that's it. That's all question number two. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.